I thinking? I am wearing all black, and I'm about to show you fuzzy projects. <sighs> Where's the lint roller when I need one? Welcome to another Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric. Today I want to share with you some of the knitted projects that I've made using my hand spun yarn. Specifically, projects that I've used 100% Angora yarn um, in conjunction with other yarns. So we will get to that in just a moment, but first I want to talk about a spinning project that I've been working on. But that means I need to get the spinning wheel out. So bear with me for just a moment and I'll get the spinning wheel in front of the camera. As you can see, I now have my wheel. I have my lap cloth to protect me. And I have, oops, I have a bucket of fleece. <laughs> so if you watch some of my other videos, you will know I love working with CVM. I have a bunch of it that I have brought with me from Colorado when I moved. Uh, I just, I, I love spinning the fiber. I love the yarn that it makes. I love knitting with that yarn. Uh, it is really one of my favorite um, fibers. When I first started spinning, I thought, oh, I've got to find more white so that I can dye. Because I do love dyeing uh, fiber and, and spinning with dyed yarn or spinning with dyed fiber. But once I started trying the CVM, once I started working with a colored uh, fleece, it was kind of hard not to want to have all the different natural colors that came in. And it was also, um, I discovered it was really fun to over dye these natural colors and get a completely different range of, of final color. So again, I'm spinning some of my CVM. Let me pull my wheel just a little bit. The reason I wanted to share this specific spinning project is uh, because it's it's because I think there are times it's really great to have a really prepped project and have a very specific yarn that we're looking for. And sometimes it's nice to just go wild and spin it and see what it wants to do. This project is a combination of both. I know exactly what kind of yarn I want. I know what spinning technique is going to give me the, the end product I want. But I didn't want to spend a lot of time prepping the fiber either. So all I've done is I've grabbed, and I've already grabbed this one, so I'll grab another section here. I grab a section out of my bucket and I just lightly open it up. If the lock structure is still quite evident, I will try to maintain that so that the fibers, like in this case, I can, I can see that there is the lock itself being opened up. So I try to keep everything aligned as if I were trying to do spinning from the lock, but I'm not, I'm not being extraordinarily uh, careful in that and I'm allowing it to kind of go a little bit everywhere so it's kind of it's kind of a mix between spinning from a cloud of fiber and spinning from the lock and the drafting or the the yeah it, that I'm doing the is I'm gonna do a long draw so I know I'm getting probably it's probably a semi woolen yarn because I'm using a woolen spinning technique, but my fibers aren't really a woolen prep. And what's going to happen with this is that I'm, I'm getting a uh, much smoother, uh, much smoother contained single. And when I apply this together, I'll have a little bit more of a worsted yarn than a true woolen. And that's what I'm aiming for because this yarn is going to be used to connect together a bunch of granny squares my daughter has um, been crocheting. So she's working on two projects right now that are granny square. 
one that is from last year's um, Christmas countdown collection that I spun. She has all of those squares done and she's been connecting them uh, whenever she sits down to watch TV, which right now isn't very often. So we ha she's, she's trying to get it done before Christmas so that I can share the Afghan in a video. Um, so that's one that she's been working on. But a couple years ago, she actually spun a bunch of CVM herself. And that, because this, the CVM she spun really wanted to spin fine, it's a nice, small, delicate, cream colored with a little variation of color every once in a while, uh, but cream colored squares. And she almost has all of those crocheted. So once she has all of those crocheted, she's run out of the yarn she spun, she needs to have a coordinating yarn to connect all the squares. And she spun up a two ply, but I've decided to go ahead and spin a three ply um, of a similar gauge uh, um, wraps per inch as to what she spun that will give it a little more strength in the connections of the granny squares. So I sat down and thought, well, I want to spin this for her so that she has it ready. Um, it's one of the things I like to do. She, she does know how to spin. But she is, um, she gets so much more enjoyment out of, of, of crochet um, and knitting while she's watching TV. So I thought I'd, I'd spin this up for her so that as soon as she ran out of her yarn, she'd be able to immediately start um, crocheting the pieces together. But I didn't want to, I didn't have the energy, I didn't have the physical energy to sit down and card a bunch of fiber, uh, make sure it's all prepped. And so instead, I just went out to the storage unit. I sorted through the buckets. I found um, a fiber. This fiber is a little more gray taupe, whereas what she was using is a little more of a cream with a bit of a brown taupe um, every so often. And so she's going to have a very cream based squares with a more of a gray um, base connectors. I think it's going to be lovely when um, it's done. And I may even show a picture of her stack of little cream squares. That might be a good idea to put in with this video. So I wanted to bring this specific spinning to you because it's just, I'm spinning the long draw. It's relaxing. Um, if I get a little thin in places, I just overlap. I use my, um, my left hand to hold on to, to, to give a little tension so I can pull with my right hand to draft. I don't worry about picking out any imperfections at this point. The only thing I take out, the only thing I take the time to remove is if I run into seconds second cuts, if I run into um, vegetable matter, if I run into things that would obviously be flaws. Out of the three, this is now the third bobbin that I'm doing, that is all I have of waste. So I'm pretty pleased. Little tiny thing like this for three, nearly three full bobbins and that's all the waste that is um, produced. And so that's one of the reasons I do like this technique is it, it gives me a little bit more of a shinier, firm worsted style yarn without combing the fiber and, um, and combing out. There would have been, there'd probably be a lot more, um, waste product. Now, with that being said, if I comb my fiber and I do get some waste, a lot of times that waste fiber is something I can use. Um, I can card into roll logs depending on how, um, uh, depending on how long the, the waste um, fiber is. Um, it's also something that I use even this little batch here as long I'll use it to stuff, um, little omegrami type stuffed animals. Um, if it, if it isn't something I can use for either of those, it goes into my compost. So I try very hard to, um, use it all. That's 
that's one of the things that I've been uh, trying to work on I, in at least with my my um, my spinning to some extent with my quilting I really do try to avoid um, producing um, any more waste than absolutely necessary uh, it's sometimes unavoidable but mainly because I you know if if my desire to avoid waste especially in the quilting and sewing if my desire to avoid waste prohibits me from actually making the product or the products that I, I want to make then it, it defeats the purpose of, of being creative but if there's a way for me to recycle to reuse to find a different purpose for it I will do that um, the lovely thing about using natural fibers of course is that it will all biodegrade but yes sometimes there's just no getting around using the others and as I've done in my other video one of my more recent videos sometimes there's a real purpose to the fibers that don't biodegrade well and so it, I think it's finding that balance it's finding the personal balance individual balance of, of ac accomplishing what we're trying to accomplish um, providing what we need to uh, our essentials but doing so in a conscientious way so I think that's what's important being being able to say at the end of the day I've been thoughtful in my creativity I've been thoughtful in how I use the materials that I have I am very grateful to live in a time in which we have so much abundance and I want to be thoughtful in how I use it so that was the spinning I wanted to do so taking it from the bucket spinning it it is a very very relaxing um, type of way of spin if you haven't tried it already I really recommend it whether you're going for something thin whether the fiber wants to go for something thick give it a try in this case this fiber just simply wants to be thin spun if I am doing it from the lock if I card it into row logs, I can get much larger, fluffier yarn. What I have come to the conclusion of that most of the time, and I think a lot of people do understand this, I would rather spin this fiber the way it wants to be spun, nice and thin from the lock, unless, as I said, I card it. Then I will use multiple plies. So when my daughter spun her yarn, similar um, micron, um similar micron wool similar breed i believe from the exact same herd um she ended up with a two ply that is thicker than i would be getting if i were doing a two ply so i'll just do a three ply that will be of the same wraps per inch or similar wraps per inch as her two ply every spinner is different every spinner will have a different um feel to, you know a different technique of a different feel a different product and we can work really hard to try to have everything match and be even or sometimes we can just relax and spin what is comfortable for us but then figure out how to use it and that was the next thing one of the other um, fibers that I have a bunch of is of course the Angora because we raised Angora um, rabbits for a while and I, I do enjoy spinning it. I know I have some videos showing spinning it. But one of the things that comes up is that, you know, Angora is an extremely warm fiber. And most of the time, um, most of the time when we use it, we only spin like 20% Angora and then the 80% other fibers because it is such a warm fiber. But spinning 100% Angora, as I did in a couple videos um, in in Tour de Fleece this year spinning hundred percent Angora has its value it has a place in our knitting and crochet world and so I'm gonna remove the spinning wheel and I'll be back to show you how I use my hundred percent Angora um, wool yarn how I use that in my knitting and crochet projects so hold on another quick intermission and I'll be right back okay so I'm back something I wanted to mention in the last um, clip 
is I think I may have mentioned this um, this CVM it's been scoured but when when I first started scouring my wool I found that I sometimes stripped the wool down to where there was no lanolin left and it felt a little too scratchy and dry for me and so rather than wanting to add back um, using mineral oils or something like that to to try to hydrate to try to condition the the fiber I just started scouring my CVM leaving in a little bit of lanolin uh, rather than completely removing it and sometimes depending on how um, large of a section I was scouring or how the, the, the fleece went in the pot and got compacted sometimes it has um, quite a bit of, of lanolin and if I find some fleece that is um, that's been scoured but it's really um, too much lanolin I'll re-scour a little bit of it before I spin it but this this has just the right amount my hands are getting moisturized as I um, as I spin and it, it, it's lovely it's not so much that it um, it makes my hands glisten it's not so much that it gets sticky and doesn't want to draft easily. It's just enough to keep everything hydrated. But one of the things is that now I feel like I have lanolin lotion or whatever. So that's one of the other reasons why I like to keep um, either an apron on or this lap cloth is it's very useful to kind of remove the extra lanolin <laughs> before I pick up something else and get lanolin on it. So I just wanted to bring that little tip um, as well um, sometimes it is nice when you're scouring your own fiber to actually leave a little bit of the lanolin in. It does make um, for an enjoyable spin. My hands aren't too dry. I actually, after spinning this stuff, I could probably spin silk really easily right now because my hands are extraordinarily hydrated. They're very moisturized. I do not need lotion today. But on to the finished um, knitting items. This past weekend, I had an opportunity to um, go for a drive and I thought, ooh, in case I'm not the one driving, I need to have a knitting project that I can take with me in the car. And, um, and so I threw this together. I pulled out a skein of red um, fiber that I had spun. <sighs> I can't remember what the fiber content is. I know it's 100% wool. I don't know which breed, but it was some red that I had. And I know that my camera doesn't always, it blues everything out just a little bit. But this is, I would say this is somewhere between, oh, I actually do remember the fiber. This was one of the skeins that I did in Torta Fleece, um, not this past summer, but the summer before. It's not part of my Christmas countdown collection. It was one of the earlier skeins that I dyed trying to figure out some of the colors. And I called this brick. So this is 100% merino. The red is 100% merino that I bought in um, roving form. And what I ended up doing is it turned out that that skein had almost the exact same yardage. Oh, I think I have a little bit of lift in here. That skein had nearly exact same yardage as a skein of the 100% Angora that I was spinning this year. So I thought, oh, well, what if I combine those? And what I initially started thinking when I was gonna make the item is I was gonna show, use a technique that I have in these other product, um, the other items that I'm gonna show you. But when I realized that the two skeins, the two skeins of fiber were almost the exact same yardage, I thought, eh, hmm. instead of doing bands of the Angora, Let's just do it two strands at a time. So I took the strand of the Merino and the strand of the Angora and I just held them together like that and I knit. And I ended up, whoops, camera. <laughs> I ended up with this, this neck cowl. Now, if you notice, it's all pearl inside. It is getting fuzzy, but the outside, see if I can, you can see the bloom forming. 
And this is the trick. This is, um, it's basically a pet, um, a, a pet brush. You can find baby hair brushes, um, pet grooming brushes, but it's a very soft bristle. I also have used a, a stiffer bristle at times when I really want to fluff up, but it's a soft bristle. And I was just sitting down in front of the TV with this in my lap, brushing it. So it's blooming and you can see the gray that blooms over it. So a soft, a soft bristle brush. It's a big scrunchy cowl. I'd put it on, but I'd end up messing up my hair and mess up my glasses, but it is wonderful. Um, it is fuzzy. It is very warm. It is something that if it was windy and cold, it, I can pull it up over my ears. I can have it scrunched down. But one of the things I have uh, found is that if I'm outside working, if I'm outside, you know, when I used to run, my arms, as long as my hands were covered and my neck was covered, I was fine. I never needed a hat. But even now, if I'm outside in the fall working or in the, in, uh, in the early spring, if I'm outside with the, the family, if my, if the wind hits my neck at all, if a cold breeze hit my, hits my neck at all, it, I just, I, I, I get so cramped up. I get so miserable feeling. So I love having these cowls on hand. Um, they, they have been really quite, um, the, the mobility saver for me because without them, I wouldn't really want to be outside. Um, where we lived in Colorado, we had lots of wind, lots of, of wind year round. And even in warmer months, um, the wind hitting my neck really bothered me. So I started using cowls. Now this one, I still have some ends. I don't ever, that's one of the things, I don't ever cut the ends down short. I've already woven it in, but I don't cut the ends down short until I take it and I set everything and kind of block it. I'll go to the sink, I'll, um, I'll, I'll wash this some soap, um, some, um, some wool friendly soap and, uh, and I'll, I'll lightly full it, not felt it, but full it up a little. After that, that's when I cut the threads completely off because, um, once it's fulled a little bit, there is much less likelihood of that moving, but I don't want to cut it off ahead of time, uh, because I want to, I don't want to have it too short. So. So yeah, so this one here, as I was saying, this is for cold weather. This is for that day that you want to be outside. You've got that wind. It's a little bit brisk. The, even if the sun's shining, it's, you, you, it's, it's, it's really chilly. This is for cold weather because that Angora is going to make this item very warm. But because it's wool, it's going to breathe. And that's what I love about it. So. That's one way to use 100% Angora. Just combine it with another strand. But another way is to use it only in a band. So as a, a technique, and this one, <laughs> this hat has made it, it needs to be brushed again. And you can see this one has much um, longer uh, fluff to it. So the other stuff that I spun, it, it didn't have quite the same length of staple, um, to the Angora as, as this one did, but this hat has been to Mongolia and back <laughs> and the last time it was washed, it didn't get brushed afterwards. So I'm just going around and I'm brushing and all of a sudden the Angora is fluffing back up, but this hat, it was again, um, I just combined two strands, just like this one. Okay. But in this case, I only combine the strands in a band. So the top of the hat and the brim of the hat has no Angora. And this one I actually will put on just a second. Let me do it. Oh, there we go. It's kind of a braid. It doesn't work so well right now because I have this big bun in my hair, <laughs> but you can see how the band is just, um, just above the brim. So none of this Angora is going to get in your face. It's not going to be something that, 
that you feel like you're breathing in. And yes, on the inside, it's just as fluffy. Um, and this was a much longer staple length to the Angora that I used. Um, this rabbit produced massive quantities of long, long um, fibers. And so mixing it as a visual, um, fact, a, a design element, that's a fabulous way to do it. And that's a really wonderful way to do if you're wanting to have um, a little bit extra warmth, but you don't want to risk it being around your face, have it up above the brim. And you could have the whole entire top done with this, and then you'd have this really wonderful fuzzy. So it looks like it gives you the effect of having a fur <laughs> patch, but it's all Angora. So that is a, a lovely, another lovely way to do it. One of the first hats that I made my daughter, she has a beautiful um, princess seam, 100% wool plaid in purple and gray um, trench coat that she made just before she went to college. And, um, and I made her out of some um, silk merino cashmere. And I know the camera is showing this as more of um, a blue. I'll show a picture so you can see it's, it's actually a purple. And what I did with this, I used some white Angora, and after knitting the, the scarf itself, I took a crochet hook and just crocheted the Angora on the end. And you can see, it gives it a nice little white fur trim. So this, ah, oh, ah, oh, this bunny. <sighs> Again, lots of beautiful, long, blooming, uh, fine, ultra fine um, fiber. Uh, we only had this bunny for a couple years. Um, obviously there was some sort of uh, genetic thing that he reached um, not such an old age, but he just one day passed away. Um, we don't think it was hair block. Um, he just, yeah, there, there, there was something that I think that he just, he just wasn't um, as ever as healthy. So <sighs> those, those were tough lessons for my daughter. This, these were her rabbits that she was raising and, um, the life lessons of taking care of them and grooming them. It, it was, it really was, um, quite the experience. Um, you love them while you can have them. You care for them the very best you can. And sometimes, um, they just, they, they pass away early before you expect. And it hopefully prepares you a little bit for the other troubles in life that that um, that you end up facing, and I think overall it has. So the scarf goes with this hat, and my daughter, when she wears these, they, she wears them back on her head. Her bangs stay here in the front, and they are adorable on her. <laughs> she pulls off these little I call them muffin hats. Um, she pulls them off quite well. She wears them really a whole lot like, um, a modern version of the snood holding her hair sometimes up in it. Um, but yeah, she just, they did, they are adorable on her. So with this one, as you can see, I crocheted edging around the bottom. So that's what I, after I finished the knitting, I crocheted some edging around the bottom and I just did a couple rows. And these are, there's two rows of knitting of the Angora before going back to three or four rows of knitting of the, the purple silk wool blend back to two more rows back to the regular. And so very simple, the little muffin hat, very similar to the hat that I showed in my last video, um, where, you know, you do your, your, your brim area, and then you add a bunch of increases all at once. And then after getting it up over the top of the crown of the head, then you do your decreases. And instead of putting a pom-pom on this one, I made a tassel. But if you notice, I didn't cut any of the tassel ends. I left them and that Angora, it, I did that because I really didn't want to run the risk of the Angora um, just going everywhere. But I put, I used the purple, there we go, put it up close. I used the purple to make the tassel um, band. And so, yeah, so that's another way I have used 
my 100% Angora, and it is fun. Now, again, um, a lot of people are worried about with the Angora, they don't want to have it too close to a baby's face. Um, there might be concerns about them inhaling the, the hairs. Um, Angora is not a whole lot different than having a long-haired cat in your house. You're constantly inhaling hair. <laughs> but these, you know, you can put the band here, you can put the band up there. These are ways to use it to where if you wanted to, you could, you could have it a band that rolls up so that it's away from the baby's face, away from your own face, or you can just have it if you don't mind having it. I find Angora to be oh, the softest of fiber, um, but again, it's all on your own per personal um, preference. So if you have access to some Angora fiber, if you haven't spun any and you want to give it a try, these are ways that you can um, use, use the fiber. Oh, and I was remembering, hold that thought. I have another Angora project over here. Let me um, pause this for a moment. Okay, back. This little guy, he is made with some Angora as well. In his case, let me get him up here. He is one strand, one single of Angora plied with one single of CVM and then he's been brushed. So he is my little fuzzy cat. His, his whiskers are the Angora. So that's when I've actually used a single blended with it. But the reason I thought about him, the reason I um, all of a sudden wanted to pause and talk about him is that my daughter, back when I was first learning how to spin Angora, my daughter actually used some of my hand spun. It was not um, in any way, shape or form a really refined yarn yet. I was still in the very early days, but I didn't want that to go to waste. So she ended up um, crocheting a bunny rabbit out of the 100% Angora fiber and it's I, I always I, I mention this whenever someone's learning how to spin those early spinning attempts can crochet into the cutest little critters they can crochet into cat toys they can crochet into um, simple shaped items you, you crochet a, 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 a ball put eyes on it and you have a critter uh, then it's just a matter of sticking a tail or some ears on it if you really want to. So all of those beginning spinning t um, yarns, I like to find a way to use them. And I find crochet is a really fabulous place to use them. I know that there are some who, who will use them as the weft in a weaving project. And that's another fabulous way to, to use those early hand spun, um, those early hand spun fibers. Some of my early Angora spinning went into some weaving projects that we had as well. It's, it's a wonderful way. I find that crochet and um, weaving are a little bit more friendly to that thick and thin and lumpy yarn than knitting is because of the way they're constructed. You can, um, certainly with crochet, you can adjust your tension and all of a sudden, instead of having the imperfections of the yarn be a problem, they can be, they're, they're kind of, they become the texture of the product, project, sorry, project, as opposed to, um, as opposed to a flaw. They're the texture, almost as if you specifically went out of your way to um, have a textured yarn. So if you are looking at spinning Angora and you're trying to figure out how to use it, um, without blending it in with other fibers, which of course, blending the Angora in with other fibers is a wonderful way to have an extraordinarily warm um, item that has a little bit of a bloom to it. Um, a little bit of Angora can create a lot of bloom in a yarn um, without, <laughs> if that's what you want, a little bit of Angora can go a long way. Even a 20% Angora to 80% wool will have a bloom. So 
a little can go a long way but when you're wanting to learn how to spin these um, finer fibers what sometimes people call exotic fibers because while Angora isn't necessarily something that you have to get you know you can't it's not like camel that's exotic right it is a fiber that is um, a little more finicky to spin it um, challenges you in a way that uh, a, a sheep's wool does not challenge you it's a great practice um, for learning how to do more delicate spinning to refine your techniques um, but at the same time it's not exactly uh, inexpensive even if you know somebody that has angora you shouldn't be <laughs> you you shouldn't be trying to nickel and dime and and um, and and uh, you shouldn't be seeing this you shouldn't see any fiber as being something you're trying to get as cheap as possible because it takes a good deal to raise the animal and to care for the animal and so we do want to actually try to do our very best in um, in contributing to the the fiber production part but if you have the opportunity if you know somebody if you have a source for the Angora you have the ability to buy it you want to give it a try and you want to try spinning it as a hundred percent I I totally recommend giving it a try a half ounce of Angora goes a long way this little ball that I have here was not more than um, probably a half ounce definitely less than an ounce of um, fiber I think it it was probably around the half ounce mark and as you can see it went a long way a little bit of Angora can go a long way but it takes practice and hand control let me grab my yarn here <laughs> sorry about that um, it takes it takes practice to get it to be a somewhat consistent yarn okay there it is and when you don't get that kind of consistency right off the bat, I know it can be frustrating. But I want to tell you, you can still use it. I have used it. My daughter's used it. I'm sure I'll post a picture if I haven't already of the little bunny that she made quite a number of years ago. Um, and it was out of some of the very first hand spun Angora. Um, he, he has lots of drape. He's quite floppy. He's adorable. Um, we did use some other wool to do some of the details on his ears, I think it was. but And then he wore um, an outfit made out of other types of wools that I had spun. You can have fun if you spin these yarns and you knit them up or crochet. But if you don't know how to crochet, yes, you could definitely knit with them. But I recommend figuring out how to crochet because when it comes to using those those thick and thins, crochet really works. And if you don't crochet and you don't want to learn how to crochet, get yourself a simple little um, loom. You can do a, you can use a, a peg loom. You can use a small rigid heddle loom. There's some wonderful little lap looms. This doesn't have to be something very complicated. Uh, and use your hand spun in the weft of the project. It can be a um, wonderful way to make squares that could be just like granny squares could be sewn together, could be, could be connected together. Um, it's a wonderful way to make scarves. Some of the wool that I've spun, I, I've used it in crochet. You could definitely do it in weaving as well. Felt it down just a little bit and it makes a wonderful um, trivet or doily um, to hold uh, plates and pots and pans and, and stuff when you set them on your table. It's insulated it, um, they, and, it, and it's decorative. So you don't have to be really fancy <laughs> with your crochet or your weaving in order to have something that helps beautify your home and use your hand spun. Whether it is hand spun that um, you've refined or hand spun that you're just learning that's my recommendation so that's my my tips today that's what I wanted to bring you I hope this video isn't too long 
I certainly, certainly wanted to share adorable little projects like that one. <laughs> and um, and I really, I really do hope that you will take some time in your near future to unwind with fiber and fabric and use your hand spun in a fun and creative way to brighten your life and bring joy in your life and maybe into the lives of those people around you. We will see you again soon and I wish you all the joy as you unwind with fiber and fabric.